Good morning, dear students. In the previous lecture, we have discussed to find the execution time using single loop. So today's lecture will discuss find the execution time. Find the execution time using nested loop in 885 microprocessor. So for this case, firstly, we have to discuss by taking one loop, then we will take the nested for loop. So for example, if we have a instruction MBI that is move immediately, for example, D is one of the resistor, H indicates into the hexadecimal. So we are taking 255 value, 255 in D. 255 is in the decimal. And after that, we need to decrement this, like decrement D until it becomes zero. So in 885, we have jump if not zero instruction to check whether the zero flag is one or not. So decrement D instruction and jump if not zero instruction that are used for single for loop like how this instruction would work, it already we have discussed, if zero flag is zero, then the loop will be repeated again and again. But if your zero flag is one, then it will exit outside from the loop. So in this case, firstly, we need to find out how many T states are required for each instruction. Like for this case, uh, I need four T states and for this uh, seven T states are required for MBI A instruction. So we need to find out how many T states are required for each instruction. To calculate a delay, we need to calculate the number of T states to find out for each instruction. So firstly, how many T states are required for this instruction? Seven T state. And for decrement D, we have already discussed that is four T states. And for jump if not zero, 10 T state when it is in the loop, when it exits out from the loop, there is a seven T states. So for how to calculate a single for loop delay or single for loop execution time, we have already discussed the total delay inside the loop and delay outside the loop. So what is delay outside the loop and delay inside the loop? So what is the delay outside the loop? Like we have to calculate firstly the number of T states. So total T states are outside the loop is seven T states and for inside the loop, how we will calculate it? Like there is a 40 states plus 10 T states. And how much time it would be executed? This loop would be executed. That is 255 times. But at one time when it exits out from the loop, then 70 states are required. So three T states are more in one case. So we have to reduce three T states. So we have to calculate it numerically. Then how many T states are required here? That approximately maybe three, five, seven, four T states. So this is the uh, these are the T states required for this loop. Then we will continue it for the nested for loop. Three, five, seven, four T states are required for this loop. So we will go to the nested for loop. Like for example, if we have to loop for nested for loop, suppose we have outer loop the stored in the counter value stored into C resistor, for example, 10 value in decimal and hexadecimal maybe we can write as 0A. So again, we have written MBI D is the inner loop which already we have taken FFH. Then after that, we have to firstly decrement the inner loop that is decrement D. Then we have to take if this condition is until it becomes zero, then it, the loop would be repeated again and again. It will go to this case. And after that, we need to decrement this, this loop, outer loop, that is decrement C. And again, it will check whether the zero flag is one or not. And it would be repeated again and again. And it would go to this label one. So now in this case, we have, we have like, two loops, one is the inner loop and another is the outer loop. So we have to find total execution time for nested for loop. So already we had discussed 
to find out the execution time for this loop it may be for example t574 t states we have calculate so for outer for loop we know if it is 2574 t states are required for inner loop if outer loop is executed 10 times then approximately how many t states would be required 3574 zero so what is the procedure we have already discussed the total t states how we can find out outside the loop and inside the loop so firstly we are calculating the total t number of t states these instructions came into inside the loop of this instruction and this became outside the loop so firstly we have to calculate number of t states number of t states inside the loop inside the loop so how would we calculate firstly how many t states are required for this case is 4 t states so we have to write here 4 t states we have calculated for these no need to repeat it again we have already calculated for these three instruction 3574 t states plus how many t states 4 t states jump if not zero it may take 10 t state or it may take 70 t state if one time the zero flag is one then 70 t states are required so firstly we will take 10 t states and we have to multiply it with how much value 10 because outer loop value is 10 and we have to decrement 3 t states out of this then we will calculate the total time how much time is required for this case firstly we have to calculate this is the these are the number of t states required inside the loop and if we will calculate total number of t states that is equivalent to t states required outside the loop t states required outside the loop outside the loop plus inside the loop inside the loop and after that we have to calculate total number of t states that is t states required outside the loop plus inside the loop so we will write here plus 70 plus that is 70 so that is approximately equivalent to 35884 t states so again we have to take if we need to calculate the execution time and if your crystal frequency is 2 megahertz 2 megahertz so we have to find out operating frequency that is 1 megahertz and we have to find out time period for one clock cycle that is 1 upon 1 megahertz that is equal to 1 microsecond and how much time is required for this is 35884 microsecond time required for this instruction thank you for watching this video